Welcome back to a new episode where we will be talking about all the font properties in CSS. You might wonder why I'm making a separate video on fonts, and the reason why I'm doing this is because texts are the major source of information on a website. And if you will be creating a website in the future for a client, typography is a very important subject because it is all about adjusting the text within the design while creating powerful content. Using the right font properties attracts readers and it will hold the audience its attention. So in our index.html, we have a h2 tag. So let's go to our style sheet and let's write down h2. And the font property is a shorthand of seven different font styles. And I want to go through them all to show you how you can change them up. And the first one is the font hyphen style. And there are different values that you can give to the font size. So let me add a comment, font size. So you have absolute keywords, which is small, medium, or large, and it's all in lowercase. So let's test it out. Uh, right after a font style, let's write down small, save it, refresh the browser. Well, it's the font size actually, excuse me. Let's refresh the browser and while well, header just turned small, we have medium, which is a little bit bigger, and we have large. The second one is relative keywords. So let's write that down. And these are parent elements of small and large. So the values are larger and smaller. So let's replace large with larger. It's a little bit bigger and you have smaller as well. You can also use percentage values. So the third one is percentage. And let's say that we want it to be 100%. Refresh it and that's, well, default. But we can also say that it has to be 200, which is double. We also have the EM unit. The EM unit is equal to the computed font size for the element to which the EM is applied. And when EM units are declared on child elements that don't have font size defined, you will inherit the font size. So right now, if we, well, let's say one EM, save it, refresh it, and this is the default value. But let's go above our H2, and let's create an HTML tag. And let's say that the font size is 80 pixels. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and you can see that h2 is a child of html so the font size of the html is the same as the h2 but what we can do is to say well we want our h2 to be 0.5 so 40 pixels save it refresh it and this looks better but we can also say that it needs to be 1.5 which is equal to 120 pixels because one is 80 and a half is 40. save it refresh it and well this is pretty big so let's change the font size in our html to 16 save it and this is way better the next font property is the font variant and this property allows you to change the target text to small caps so let's write down font hyphen variant the default is normal so let's save it and refresh the browser and you can see that nothing's happening but we can also write down small caps save it refresh the browser and while well, we have small capital letters and we can also set it to initial this is pretty much the property's default value so let's save it refresh it and this is what it actually was the next property is the font weight and the name pretty much implies what it means. It will set the boldness of the font. And by default, the font is normal. But we can also set it equal to bold. So let's save it, refresh it. Well, it is already bold. So let's set it equal to normal. And well, this is normal. But instead of using keywords, I like to use values. 
and you can use the values 100 to 900. And these are supposed to give nine different weights from very light to very bold. So let's change normal to 100, save it, refresh the browser, and that's basically what normal is. But we can set it equal to 700, which is equal to bold, and we can set it equal to 400, which is the default. The next property is the font style. And if you have ever worked with Microsoft Word, what I'm guessing you have, this might be pretty familiar to you. So by default, the font style is equal to normal, but you can change it up to italic. Save it, refresh the browser, and well, all the letters are, are italic. We can change it to oblique. Save it, refresh the browser, and this is pretty much the same as italic. And we can set it equal to initial, which is the default value. The last property is the font family. So let's write it down. And this property specifies the font for an element. You can add more than one font family as a fallback system in case a browser does not support the first font. So I have a link. Let me copy it and let's paste it in the browser. It's W3Schools and these are web safe fonts. So let's scroll down a little bit. And these are all the fonts that every browser can use. So let's say that we want to copy, let's say this one, copy it and paste it in the font family. Let's save it. Let's go back to the browser. Let's refresh it. And you can see that the font just changed. And well, this is already way better than what we had. But this is not what I like to do when I'm working on a website. What I like to do is to import fonts from Google Fonts. So let's go to a new website called fonts punctuation mark google.com. There is a list of almost 1000 fonts that you can import inside your index.html file. I like to use these fonts way more than using the WebSafe font. And the way you add it is to click on the name and you can see all the font styles that you can use. And what we want to do is to click on the plus icon and you can see that a little pop-up just appeared in our screen. So let's click on it. If you click on customize, you can choose the well font way that you want to have. Right now, I want to focus on regular. So let's go back to embed. Let's copy the link and we can paste it inside our index.html right below the first link that we created. So let's save it. Let's go back to the browser. And what we need to do now is to copy our font family and paste it right inside of our CSS. Well, we can replace it. Let's save it. Let's go back to our project. Let's refresh it. And right now we have added a font from an external style sheet because we're linking in our index.html with our link tag, which is using an external resource on a website. This was it for this episode, and in the next episode, I want to talk about creating subpages in HTML. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.